The Swag West may already be settled, but that doesn't mean anything to Grambling and Southern. They still feel like they have a lot to play for in this year's Bayou Classic. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked on HBCU podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked on podcast network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor and current contributing writer at USA Today Saints Wire. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked on HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off, it don't mean that the journey's over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College today, or just Locked On College. But do that today. <laughs> locked On College to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. It is the Bayou Classic. It is our last HBCU football game of the week in the regular season. After this, we're in championship mode. We're in playoff mode. We're in celebration bowl mode. That's where we're in. But right now, we have three matchups, two storylines, and a key to victory for the 2023 Bayou Classic. It's Grambling versus Southern. And they don't have much to play for as far as standing, but they got a lot to play for as far as bragging rights. And we'll get into that in segment two. But let's kick it off with these matchups because the primary thing that I'm looking for in this game is Grambling's offense versus Southern's defense. That's where the true excitement comes from. That's where the true joy for me, that's where that comes from, in my personal opinion. So, you know, it, it's Saturday right after, after Thanksgiving. I suggest that you don't go warm up them leftovers while Grambling has the ball. Wait till Southern has the ball. Of course, you could miss something either way, but you're more likely to miss something exciting if Grambling has the ball. So when you're so excited about an offense, I feel like it's only right to kick it off with the quarterback because Miles Crawley is a guy who I really do like Crawley's game. I really do enjoy to watch him play. And at a certain point, I thought Crawley was going to be in the conversation for SWAC Offensive Player of the Year. Every day, or if you missed yesterday's episode, please go there. I think it's probably around the 13 and a half, 14 mark, where I just start going in on why I think Ladarius Owens, or it's not yesterday, but it's Tuesday. It's the last episode that we recorded. But on why Ladarius Owens should be the offensive player of the year. But that at one point, I thought that was going to be Miles Crawley. Ended up not being that, but it also created an interesting season arc for him, where at one point he was 200-yard game, 200-yard game, 200-yard game. But then the last three games, it's been under 200 every single week. He started turning the ball over a little bit more. You know, all of those things came into play on why his conversation for off of the player of the year went down. And then also you have to look at the fact that Grambling just wasn't winning. And as a quarterback, not winning. So drastically different than a running back, not winning. Um, so many things in here. Well, I want to see how do you end the season? Three games over 200 yards followed by three games under 200 yards. You've thrown more interceptions as the year has gone on. You haven't been a turnover-prone quarterback, but you have had a couple of multi-interception games. What are you going to do against this secondary? They're pretty good, you know, a little bit above average as far as within the SWAT keeping yardage off of the uh, off of the stat sheet. They don't force as many turnovers as they did in 2022, though. Last year, they were some ball hawks, and they have some of the same pieces but they just haven't been able to get as many turnovers this year. Those are things to watch. Then you look at what I probably am excited about the most, and that's Chance Williams and Floyd Chalk, the Grambling running backs, versus Taj Brown and Kelby Givens, the defense alignment for Southern. And these two guys on the D-line are so versatile. I really could have just said the offensive line versus them, 
and made it a pass rush and a run stop. But I wanted to highlight this because Grambling has a unique duo of their own. And in their running back tandem, they have Chance Williams, who's the yardage guy. He's second in the conference in yardage. And then you have Floyd Chalk, who's the touchdown guy. He's second in the in the conference in touchdowns. But granted, you got to look at it. Williams ain't that far behind. Chalk has eight touchdowns, I believe, and Williams has six. So they're both really productive running backs. But then you look at Givens and you look at Brown and they disrupt, they penetrate the offensive line on a regular basis. They've only played 10 games. Other teams in the conference have played 11. So let's look at where Givens and Brown stand currently as far as not average per game, just straight up tackles for a loss. You have Givens at second and he only needs two to be tied for first. You have Brown at sixth and he only needs one tackle for a loss we're speaking about to be tied for fifth. So I think that there's a good chance that you have two players in the top five from this Southern defensive line who are able to be uh, top five tackles for a loss. So that's something I think is personally really exciting. They're disruptive players. And you look at the first two matchups and how descriptive I am with these. That's how much excitement that I have because I want to see what Miles Crawley does genuinely. And then I also genuinely want to see what Gibbons and Brown do because they're so disruptive of players that I can't wait to see them in this game. Right. So you still have one more. And that's where Harold Blood comes in. And I'm not overly impressed by Harold Blood. But when Dooley, because Eric Dooley has been fired. Right. When Dooley is gone. Now you have a new offensive coordinator. You have somebody who is calling a different type of play. And maybe we seen that we see that same surge from blood that we saw from uh, McDaniel in the SWAC championship game last year where he was new to the lineup because of a benching. But then you have blood who comes in and he has a new offensive coordinator. So it's just kind of this new catalyst that could spark something up. That's where the interesting part comes from. And it's Harold blood versus he can run the ball, but I'll say the secondary. I'll probably say Grambling secondary. I just want to see what happens there because I think that he's going to need to make plays in order for Southern to come up victorious. I'm not sure if you can have a bad passing day and still win this game. Honest and truly, I just do not know. So that's just something to kind of look forward to. But the storylines are also very fascinating. For the first time in a long time, the storylines are not my biggest intrigue into a game. However, I do think it's important to point out that there's not much to play for in a swipe championship race or anything like that. But that didn't make this game lose any importance. That may go without saying, but it doesn't go without elaboration as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, and a lot of times we look at fixing up your car. And yes, eBay Motors is great for that. You need a new starter, new alternator, a part here, a part there. They are perfect for that. You put your car in the My Garage section. Maybe you got a 2015 Toyota Camry. You put that into the My Garage section, and from there, every piece that they give you will fit your car. So you just have to pick which one that you want. And it's going to be much cheaper than if you're going to go to get them from some other website. But OK, maybe you don't want to fix your car up, right? Maybe that's not, there's nothing wrong with your car. You just trying to do it up. Forget fixing it up. You trying to do it up. You want to get some lights on there. You want to get some new wheels, some new rims. You can get those on eBay Motor as well. eBay Motors, excuse me, as well. So you have eBayMotors.com. Whether you want to fix your car up, whether you want to do your car up, it's the number one spot to go. eBayMotors.com. Don't get charged an arm and a leg elsewhere. You know the place to be is eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. And remember, we have our Locked on Sports Today 24-7 podcast stream. You want to catch the NBA talk, want to catch the NFL talk, everything in, in between, the NFL draft, all of these things are kicking and rolling. You can catch them on our 24-7 stream all day, every day, no breaks, all gas. So go to Locked On Sports today when you finish hearing my voice and see what they're playing right now because who knows what it could be. But right now we're looking at the Bayou Classic. It's Friday. I hope that you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. I'm glad that you're coming in and you're watching me. Maybe you're eating your leftovers right now from the day before. Maybe you're just getting ready for your first plate of the day. 
but I appreciate you nonetheless for doing this and going over it with me. So thank you sincerely. We want to look at the two storylines as we continue with today's episode. And the first storyline is bragging rights. Um, it's easy to say that this game doesn't matter from an outside looking in. I don't think anybody on the inside would ever say something like that. It's a rivalry game, right? And I don't think many people are saying that anyway. But the beautiful part about rivalry games at the end of the year to me is it always gives you something to play for. No matter what, it gives you something to play for. And in games like this, it means so much more. It means so much more than just a singular game. And it's funny because I was talking to my barber today, right? I was in a chair and my barber is an Ohio State fan. and since Ryan Day, the head coach of Ohio State now, has taken over, he is yet to beat the Buckeyes. I mean, he's yet to beat Michigan, the Wolverines. And it's one of those things where they've been really good since Day has taken over, but they haven't beaten Michigan. They've been successful, though. They've done a lot of other things, but they haven't beaten their most hated rival, Michigan. And it's like, man, if this dude don't win, it's time for him to go. It's that type of energy that comes from rivalry games so don't tell me nothing matters that's not the case you know what i mean that's not the case at all because this is that type of game where it's like hugh are you gonna get your first bayou classic win coach graves is in his uh second bayou classic as an interim head coach so that'll be really interesting he's looking to get a win those type of situations those type of conversations those are the things that really matter here yeah the swack west isn't there right and you have the acting head coach you have an interim head coach in Coach Graves, and you have an acting head coach in Coach Wallace. They all just work together. Let's just do that. Let's not break it down or whatnot. Um, but he's a New Orleans native, right? So he was in the city. So this Bayou Classic means a lot to him. A lot of Southern talent, a lot of uh, Grambling talent is going to be in-state talent. So this game means a lot to him, whether they're connected to the university, whether they've been through this before, whether they might just be from the state or just from the city, period. This means a lot to Southern and Grambling players. And I love that. I wish that PV game for us was at the end of the year. Give me something to look forward to. It, otherwise, I'm sitting around here on Labor Day just miser miserable. Feeling like, oh, okay, I know what the season's going to be. But we're getting them next year. We're getting them next year, baby. But overall, those games give things to look forward to at the end of the year, as opposed to just kind of having your rivalry in the middle having a rivalry at the beginning, and then maybe at the end of the year, once everything is lost for you, just tail off. I don't know what the excitement level is at TSU on the fan base side. Um, I don't really consider myself in a fan base anymore. I consider myself part of the media, and I kind of have to I have to take a step out of that every time I talk about TSU, so it's hard for me to just genuinely be a fan anymore. Um, but I would imagine that the excitement is pretty low. The excitement is pretty low. And also, I might be lying. I might be lying to you. Like, if we were good, I'd probably consider myself in the fan base because I would probably still be impassioned. But when you're not winning, it's easy to take that step back. But overall, maybe this is just preparing me because I do feel like I got to take that step back. But this isn't about my progression as a uh, journalist. This is about the Bayou Classic. So let's get into the second storyline in this game. And it's the energy. And I'm going to be brief about this because the energy leads into the key to victory for Grambling or for Southern as well. The energy in this game from Southern. There's a base level energy in football, right? Sometimes you come out flat, you're below that base level. Sometimes you're amped up, you're above that base level. There's a base level. But in rivalry games, you have to up that. The Bayou Classic, they're already going to be amped up. Like that's If you're not amped up for the Bayou Classic, you don't need to be on the field. Point blank, period. But for Southern, it has to be something a little bit more. It has to be something a little bit more than just the normal Bayou Classic hype. Because you don't want to meet Grambling on even like you to me you haven't been properly motivated right if y'all are even because eric dooley just got fired with one game left and i'm not saying that should be an indictment on the team though if i was on the team i'd probably view it that way what i'm saying in this aspect is that with dooley getting fired there's going to be certain changes that come a part of that such as willie totten calling the plays and ad and the athletic director was speaking about the energy within practices and things of that nature. So are you going to come in like you're trying to make a statement? That's something that I'm really waiting to see because that's something that I personally feel like they should try to do in this game. But I feel like I'm saying too much and I don't want to get redundant when I get into my key to victory because for Southern to win, I think that they have to channel the energy of these last two weeks and turn it into a performance 
on this game in the Superdome. So let's get into that as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. And listen, I understand that procrastination kills. I've been there too. I'm trying to get on the road and I'm like, man, I got to finish my book. I got to do this. It's time is it when I'm recording this. It's 10.52. I ain't packed. I ain't read. I ain't did nothing. Now, if we take that into tickets, I may be thinking, man, these tickets are going to be through, to the, uh, through the roof and too high. But not when it comes to game time. When it comes to game time, doesn't matter how much you procrastinate. You're going to finish that book. You're going to finish that packing. And you're going to get it for a low price. Right? Let's stop using metaphors and analogies and everything. Game time is the best place for all of your last-minute ticket deals. And matter of fact, you won't find a better price. But if you can, in the same section, the same row, then they will give you 110% back on the difference. That's how confident that they are that you won't be able to find a better price. This goes for sporting events, theaters, uh, plays, concerts, comedy shows, anything in your local area. Just look it up on the Game Time app, see if it's there. And if you're new to Game Time, use the code Locked On College and you get $20 off your first purchase. So go ahead and download the Game Time app. I don't even know why you're still listening to me. What you waiting for? As wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day, making it all the way to segment three. And I thank you two times for that. Now, our key to victory that I've already kind of spoke about for Southern is channeling that energy. Story time again, right? We've already used the Ohio State, Michigan example when it comes to what's on the line and how important these games are. Because to me, these type of rivalry games count for like three. It's just one game on a win-loss, but it counts for like three because the weight that it has for you, for the pride of the university, all of that in between. For me, you have to channel the energy of Eric Dooley's firing. It's been two weeks now since that's happened, basically a week and a half, right? You have to channel that. I'll use the Buffalo Bills, for example. This past weekend was their first game with a new offensive coordinator. They had Joe Brady at OC instead of Ken Dorsey. And feel how you want to feel about his firing and whatnot. After that game, they came in and laid on one of the best offensive, not even one of the best offensive performance that has been played against the New York Jets all year long. I don't think that's a coincidence. They were impassioned. You see all of the things that happen, whether they're positive or negative. And a lot of times negative kind of a uh, or negative uh, uh, um, situations are the catalyst for you to have such a great experience. It's about how do you rebound from that? It's about what do you do? Cause that's going to be there. Right? So when they had the offensive coordinator fired, when you had the star receivers brother tweeting about how the quarterback ain't it, when you got all of these things going on, how are you going to respond? And they respond with a great performance. And after the game, Josh Allen says, I'm effing back. Cause he's been hearing everybody talk about him. Every time he throw an interception, people want to talk about Dak freaking Prescott. Ain't got nothing to do with nothing, but Josh Allen is hearing that. And it doesn't help that Dak Prescott, or excuse me, the star receiver's brother who is talking trash, is on the team with Dak Prescott. I don't think it's a coincidence. All of these things play a part. Josh Allen heard it. The Buffalo Bills heard it. Trust and believe that the Southern Jaguars have heard it. But how are you going to respond? Are you the quarterback, Harold Blood, going to come in and say, Whatever you want to say, I don't know if he's going to be on am and back or whatever the heck is going to be, but are you going to have a statement like that? To me, you have to come out in this game and treat it like a season opener. When I'm opening up the season, I'm trying to make a statement. I'm trying to make a statement that this is who I am. I'm trying to tell the fan base. I'm trying to tell my, oppos uh, my opponents upcoming, this is who I am. That's what you should try to do here. Of course, it's the end of the year. It's not the same, Right. It's not the same. You're not telling people this is who you are because next year you'll be a completely different team. You'll have seniors who will leave. you have players who will transfer. you have a new coach. you have everything. But right now you have to channel the energy of all of the conversation around you, the conversation about Dooley, the switch up of play calling, because they don't know exactly what's coming. There's kind of a cap on how much, man, it, it's not, it's two weeks. There's very little that you can install in two weeks. You're not going to drastically change the offense. But at the same time, you are going to implement some different things. You're going to have some different strategies. Situational play calling could be different. That's what I mean when I say there's a, a slight cap on how much grambling can take away from the first 10 games of the season because, yes, you'll have plays, and there will be some of the same plays. The cues will be the same. 
but Willie Totten is not Eric Dooley. And how they handle situations could be drastically different. So because it's third and three, doesn't mean it's going to be played the same. You've seen third and three play the same way every single year, but now Willie Totten's there. Maybe he switches it up a little bit. We'll see those things. Now, if you're if you're grambling, to me, the key to victory for them is to have more rushing yards, win the running battle. Because when you look at Southern, I want to read to you a couple of stats on Southern's rushing battle this year. So their yards versus their opponent's yards. And they've lost the rushing battle five times. And they lost in four of those five games. They've won the rushing battle five times. And they've won in four of those five games. So there's an exception to each. But when you look at it, when Southern wins the running battle, when they have more rushing yards than their opponent, they tend to win. When they have less rushing yards than their opponent, they tend to lose. So if I'm grambling, that's the battle I'm trying to win because it's a trend that continues all the way throughout the year. 10 games is a large sample size to say when you run against them, they don't do that well. And in addition to that, they're not really that good of a rushing team, so I don't know how hard it's going to be. One of the times when they had more rushing yards, they only had 60. But then also, if you do run the ball against them well, now Harold Blood, or if you take the running game away from them, I should say, Harold Blood is made to make a play. And I think I've expressed it before on here, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I'm not just going to – I'm not going to – just lay in on the topic. If I have to bet on, on Harold Blood to beat me, I'm feeling okay. If I have to worry about, is Harold Blood going to make the throw to take me out at the end of the game? I'd bet on that. And if I die by that, I'd die by that. But at the end of the day, that's what I'm betting my life on. I'd, and I don't think that Southern, I don't think that Southern is that good on offense. I've just never been impressed by them offensively. Um, they don't run the ball well. I don't think they throw the ball exceptionally well. But everything's different. You know, like, I think we're going to see a different Southern. We're going to see a different Southern. I just don't know how. But all in all, I'm running the ball. <laughs> I'm running the ball on them. I have two running backs that I like. And really just get some, get some yardage. Take the running game out. There's so many ways that you can win the running battle. You can stop them. You can get a lead to where they have to pass the ball more. Like there's different routes to go about this, but history tells you that if you have more rushing yards than Southern, you are going to win this game. The only team that did it and weren't able to win it all or win that game was Texas Southern. But that was kind of crazy where you had a, a late fumble return for a touchdown. It was just, it was a wonky game. It was a wonky game, but everybody else who has out rushed or has out gained Southern on the ground has won the game. So, yeah, that's what you need to do, Grambling. And I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. We'll be back on Monday to recap this game and then to start previewing the SWAG championship. I'm excited. We're getting into championship season. It's, it's exciting because it's the best part of football, but then it's also sad because it means football is almost gone. But no, no fret. We still have at least two, three more weeks of content after this. Four more weeks. Like, we're we going we gonna to run this football thing for a while because who doesn't love a little bit of football but i appreciate you sincerely for making this your first listen of the day every day and we'll be back next week and until the next time that we hear each other family take care stay blessed peace